before we move on to looking at the EQ section in more detail, I thought it would be good to clarify the differences between using NeoVerb as an insert and as a send effect. Now reverb in particular is one of those effects that is used commonly as both. So it is very much situation dependent, but there are certain disadvantages to using it as an insert, which is how we're using it right now. And I'll show you what they are. So whilst using it as an insert, you only have a single control here, this dry wet slider, for determining the amount of reverb. And if you remember before, I described it as when set to naught, you're standing right next to the guitar. And when set to 100, the guitar is a considerable distance away from you. Just to listen to that again. And the reason for this is, not only are you increasing the level of the reflections being created by NeoVerb, but you're decreasing that dry sound, which if you remember in our diagram was the direct sound. So there's no way of increasing the amount of reverb without decreasing the dry signal, which can have negative consequences on your mix if you want this guitar to remain you know, upfront and present in the mix. Now you can fix this with the level slider here to some extent, certainly when it's only set to a to a small amount here, as you know you can boost that to make sure that the dry signal level drop off here when it's been faded out slightly uh, can be boosted again with the level slider so there's not so much of a drop down. So this level slider does offer you a little bit more control, but obviously there's only so much the level slider can do. And as we get up into the higher regions there, it's going to be uh, quite a difficult problem to fix. So the way to get around this is to have it as a send effect rather than an insert. So the way that we do that in live here is to use these return channels. In other doors, you'll be using uh, auxiliary channels, but they're exactly the same thing. They're just sort of empty mixer channels that are waiting to have effects added to them and then tracks sent to them. So let's take Neoverb. Let's just drag it over onto the return channel. And then the first thing we need to do is to set it to fully wet. Because as we've got the effect on, us, on its own track here now, we don't care about the dry signal anymore because that's on the actual track itself. All we care about is the reverb. So we have it set to fully wet. 100%. And now what we have to do is use this send dial here, send A, as it's return channel A, to send the signal, however much of it we like, to NeoVerb. So in essence, it's like turning up the wet slider like we had before, but without turning down the dry, which is on its own on the track here. So yeah, completely separate channel here for mixing in the amount of reverb that we want. So that's a real bonus and gives you a lot more control over the levels. And another advantage that it offers, and this is where it sort of most closely emulates an old school studio setup where you'd have a hardware reverb. It now means that I can send various other sounds to that reverb using the send dial. For example, the vocal. Over wire 
Just soloing that that's that's what the reverb sounds like uh, and we're just sending these different tracks to it in different amounts to sort of place them in that space so that's like one kind of common more old school perhaps reverb technique and a good way of gelling your mix uh, and it also saves cpu obviously you don't need to have separate instances of neoverb on every channel but of course at the moment we're using this reverb that i designed very basically for the guitar for lots of other sounds so if we're doing it this way we'd need to redo the reverb with all of the other sounds in mind as opposed to designing it for one sound and then dragging it onto the return track uh, but once you're sending all your sounds to it and you're happy with the kind of levels going in there you can then do all the same processes uh, and set up the reverb that's most suited to all of the sounds redoing the EQ and using the unmasking once you've got the sounds being sent to it so it can it can um, be applied appropriately in that case so yeah a little bit less control having the having the one in that you couldn't personalize the reverb to suit all of your individual sounds which is actually what we're going to be doing more on this course um, but yeah it can be a good technique for like I've said helping to gel the sounds and place them all in this in this virtual space in your mix